Uh, ask anybody who's been through childbirth. Uh, it's not fun for anybody, except maybe the doctor who gets all the money. But anyway, <laughs> when we're in this material world, we have to suffer three kinds of miseries. Adiatmic, adidaivic, and adibotic. Adiatmic means miseries that come from our own self, from our own uh, stupid actions. And adidaivic means uh, miseries that come from the demigods, like, you know, bad weather, uh, earthquakes, wars, and stuff like that, that are caused by the group karma of so many people. And adibotic means uh, miseries that come from other living entities, like when we're in school and the big kids beat us up and stuff like that. Everybody goes through that, huh? The neighbors. Yeah, the neighbors and their, and their party. The neighbors had a big party last night. <laughs> oh, boy. So anyway, this is going on in the material world all the time. And the only cure for it is to get out of the material world. As long as we're in this material world, we're always going to have those three kinds of miseries. There's no escape from it. As long as we take a material body, there's always going to be suffering involved. So the goal, the objective of all Vedic knowledge is to get out of this material world. That is the assumption behind everything you read in the esoteric teaching everything you study in the Vedic scriptures. They're all assuming that the goal is to get out of here, go back to the spiritual world where we won't have any suffering. Huh? Because the spiritual world is eternal, it's blissful, it's full of knowledge. Everything is perfect there. So our process is to take our work and offer the result to the Supreme Lord for his enjoyment to serve his purposes, uh, to help meet his objectives in this world. Because the Lord has a reason for creating this material world, and the reason is to uh, educate us uh, that this is really a bad idea <laughs> to try to live independently from him, and to give us the knowledge that we need to come back to him. So spreading this knowledge, giving the esoteric teaching to people is actually serving the purpose of the Lord in this material world. And when we do that, guess what? We're released from all our karma. Does that mean that bad things never happen to devotees? No, bad things still happen, but we don't suffer. How is that? Because our consciousness is in contact with the Supreme Lord at all times through his holy name and through our service. Uh, and because of that, the suffering is minimized. I don't say it's completely removed, but it's minimized. Often things that we would have to experience as a result of our karma, uh, we experience them in dreams instead of in reality. Well, this is stated in the scriptures. And also we find that because we are always thinking of the Lord and we're in connection with him through our activities, through our our work every day, um, for example, our preaching on the internet and stuff like that. We're always thinking of him. We're always in connection with him. And he's the source of everything beautiful, everything good, everything wonderful. The name Krishna means the reservoir of pleasure. So when we're in touch with Krishna, we're always feeling transcendental pleasure. And that's the actual nature of yoga. Karma yoga means simply engaging our resources, our time, our energy, our possessions in devotional service or the service of the Lord's purposes in this world. Is it possible to have deep realizations without undergoing some sort of suffering? What kind of intense spiritual suffering is that? And how is it different from material suffering? Actually, all suffering is spiritual in the sense that the root cause of suffering is separation from the Supreme. Our natural source of enjoyment is our association with the Supreme Lord. So when we're in this material world, we're separated from him. And because of that separation, even though we want to enjoy, because our nature is to enjoy, we can't because we're separated from the source of actual enjoyment. 
So then we start concocting all these ideas. Well, if I can just do this, or if I can just get that, or if I can just get some more of this, or if I can, you know, uh, if I could just get a perfect love relationship, ah, then I would enjoy. Huh? So we start hunting and looking and searching and trying this and trying that and doing so many th unnecessary things. Trying to enjoy because our nature is to enjoy but the source of our enjoyment is missing. Huh? That's suffering. <laughs> so there are 8,400,000 species of life in this material world. And according to their karma, the souls are going through all those different species, one after another. Yet, they never experience the actual happiness that they're looking for. They never get to taste the real joy of life because they're not in association with God. That's suffering. And it goes on, not just year after year, but life after life. Huh? It goes on and on and on and on. And we try this and we try that and we concoct all these different ideas about how we're going to become happy in the future. But then when we actually reach those things, it doesn't really make us happy at all. Huh? That's the human condition, the existential condition of the soul in the material world. So the only way out of this is through yoga. And yoga means to connect our consciousness with the Lord's consciousness. Uh, we'll never find a perfect love in this material world. Never. Get over it. <laughs> Give it up. It's not going to happen. Huh? There'll always be some problem, some argument, some disagreement, some misunderstanding, or, so, or not, sooner or later, either you're going to die or your love, beloved is going to die, and that's the end of that. But you just ask anybody that's married for, for five or ten years, huh? How's it going? <laughs> and if they're honest, they'll say, oh, so many problems. Huh? The thrill is gone. It's not like it was when we were dating, blah, 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 blah. Because when they were dating, they had the false hope that, oh, when we get married, everything's going to be perfect. Huh? And then they get married, and guess what? It's not perfect. <laughs> It'll never be perfect. This material world is never perfect. So we have to give up the idea that we're going to be happy by some material arrangement. That that's just concoction. It's our imagination. It's not real. It's a dream. Huh? Just like if you, you know, smoke some ganja or something like that, and then you're thinking, oh, yes, everything is very nice. <laughs> and then as soon as it wears off, oh, right back to the same old thing again. Except now it's worse, because for the time that you were high, you didn't do anything to solve your problems. So the, in the time, the problem has gotten worse. Because huh? problems only get worse unless you do something about that. That's the, the nature of this material world. So, because of the function of time, uh, we're pushed to try to make some solution to our different problems. Yet, everything we do, according to the material conception, only makes the problem worse. Because we entangle ourselves more and more in the material energy. And remember, the material energy the contact of our consciousness with the material energy is the source of suffering. Uh, so the more we become entangled in this material energy and all of the designations and attachments and possessions and relationships in this material world, the more we suffer. And that should teach us, uh, if we have any intelligence at all, that should teach us that this material world is not our real home. And the only thing that we should be doing here is trying to get out. Just like if you're in jail. If someone is in jail, they realize, uh, wait a minute, this is not really the, uh, you know, the best place to be, and they should be trying to get out of there. Huh? But if, if they're stupid, then they're going to commit more crimes in jail. Huh? This is actually going on. The, somebody gets sent to jail, and then they get in a fight, and then they get another charge because of that, and they have to spend more time in jail, and so on and so on. Uh, so uh, this is going on because people are not intelligent. 
If you're intelligent, you realize, oh, I'm suffering. I have to get out of here. That's intelligence. Huh? That, that's real consciousness. When, when we actually become conscious of how much we're suffering, how much everybody is suffering, it's not just us. Ask anybody. They're all suffering. The way out of this is to cultivate spiritual consciousness according to the Vedic scriptures. The Vedic scriptures are the only scriptures in the world, the only source of knowledge in the world that gives the complete understanding of our situation and how to get out. Uh, it's just like a manual, that if you follow the steps in this manual, then you'll get out of jail. Uh, you'll get parole. <laughs> so you get released early. Uh, Early means before the complete sentence. If like you, you get sentenced to 20 years in jail, and then you do uh, very nice work while you're in jail, maybe you get out after 10 years.